Hi, I'm Steve Myers. I'm the sales manager for the U.S. and Canada for BPG's Load Pro Overload Monitoring Systems. Today with me, I have Tom Remage from Micro Measurements, and we're going to go over a few of the basics of the Load Pro 1430, used to be called the Bandway uh, Overload Monitoring System. We picked up a new transit band, and we're going to kind of tell you how Load Pro works and how it's going to work with our transit band and why you'd want to put it on a transit band in the first place. So basically, you're going to get a kit, or your installer is going to get a kit. First thing they're going to do, obviously, open it up. You're going to make sure you got all the components. Uh, probably your most important thing is your install manual and user's guide. It's going to give you the basics. It's got some stuff in the back, too, where you can record what number of sensors and where you put them and kind of the basic configuration. So if you ever have to go back and do stuff over again or have to... Um, replace an inclinometer, which hopefully you shouldn't. Uh, it'll kind of let you know how you laid it out the first time. Um, as Tom likes to say, your most important element is your uh, wire wraps. That actually, you can't no. do without tie wraps, okay? Yeah. You got it. They're the most important component. You got to have tie wraps. Obviously, you got a parts list. Uh, double check that to make sure you got everything you're supposed to have. Um, no screws to lose? No screws to lose. Excellent. So, excellent. so you're safe on that. Everything's wrap it and stick it. So um, Tom was asking me earlier, obviously, why would you even put on a overload monitoring system kit? Uh, in this case, I mean, probably one of the big reasons is liability and, and fines. Um, you know, if it looks like you're overloaded, the police are going to pull you over, pull out some wheel wires, and run your band truck whatever across it and they're going to make sure not only you're not exceeding the overall weight limit of the vehicle but that also that your axles aren't exceeding the overall weight limits so uh, maintenance maintenance is another big issue obviously as a you know driving your personal truck or van or whatever if you've overloaded it you notice it doesn't brake the same doesn't steer the same a lot of times it feels like it's almost out of control same thing with a, a heavier duty or vehicle like this cargo van dump truck uh, even your semis obviously if they're overloaded the weights not balanced properly um, you're gonna wear your brakes you're gonna break springs um, you're not gonna be able to stop in time I mean everything's just gonna be accelerated as far as the repair side of it and from a liability standpoint, if you're overloaded and you hit somebody, guess who's at fault? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're going to go for the uh, the biggest checkbook. So you get a nice name on the side of your van, that's who they're going to go after. And you know, like you said earlier, it's a litigious society. So, I mean, somebody's going to look to sue somebody. So this is just a good way to protect. If you, <coughs> the other thing, too, people don't think about, too, is, is if you're overloaded and you get in an accident and they find out you're overloaded, um, your insurance. I mean, I know in the UK and a lot of nations, um, if they find out you're overloaded, you're basically not insured. So you've voided your insurance. And then you pay the whole thing. And then you pay the whole thing. So not only are you going to get sued, you're in charge of the whole bill. So, I mean, it just makes good sense not to be overloaded. Um, I mean, it's not a weighing system in the sense if you put 50 pounds in the back, it's going to show you 50 pounds. It's a system more towards... Um, not exceeding your maximum weight it'll give you a weight all through the range but obviously you're dealing with the suspension and secondary technologies so i mean your real prize is that you're not overloaded that you're safe um, that your load's balanced and that you're good to go so it's going to show you a picture of the front of the van and the back of the van and the loads that are associated with that correct correct so yeah. i'm looking at this what kind of technology does it use well the nice thing with our system is that it's a no weld so solution so, um, you know, you don't have to weld on the axle, you don't have to weld on the springs, uh, you're not voiding warranties, you don't need a, a specialized, you know, workforce to be able to install it. Fairly simple to install, but the main ingredient, as I call it, is BPG's patented inclinometer. Um, it's something that they patented years ago. It's a technology that, that only they have, um, and it's a no-weld solution. So it's fairly simple. You just get that top layer of paint off of the leaf spring and- And or suspension component? Suspension component. It could be a torque rod. It could be something else. You just want something that has Anything consistent- Anything that displaces. Yeah, it's got consistent movement. You know, if you put 500 pounds, it dis displaces a certain amount. You number put, of degrees. Yeah, you put 500 on again, it displaces similar. So I mean, you don't want something that's got a lot of rubber or something that's 
got a lot of extra motion in it. Right. So uh, the inkthenometers take off the top layer of paint. Real simple to do. Then we use a 3M adhesive, same type of adhesive you use holding in skyscraper windows. So it's got a cure time of 12 to 24 hours. So you put this on the part you just scraped off. You put your sensor on it, clamp it down. We throw a tie wrap just to keep it solid. And within 12 to 24 hours, you won't get it off. So, so it's like an adhesive system that, that is a, a press and seal, if you will, but it requires a little bit of time for maximum right, to, strength. Right, secure, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, like yeah. our butyl rubber does in our strain gauges. It's the first time you put it down, it's good, but in 24 hours, it's much better. Yeah, yeah, same with this. And it's, it's not coming off. The good thing is it's not coming off, but if you did want to put it on another vehicle, like this vehicle is at end of life, you could slice it off. Um, clean up your gauge and then uh, rebond it with another strip. So it's it's not coming off, but you can't get it off if you want to use it on another vehicle. So how long does your typical installation take? Is it two hours, two days, two weeks? What are we talking about? Here? Normally for a two axle system like this transit van we have here, um, four to five hours the first time. And when I say the first time, it's you know like anything new, uh, you figure out kind of where you want to put the sensors. You know where you're going to mount the the indicator, where you're going to mount the junction box. But once you do it once, then really we we've, we've seen people install them in two to three hours. So if you've got a fleet of vans, the first one's going to take you a while. The second one's going to be less. And by the time you get to the third one, you can watch the guy just and he's done. Yeah, we had a distributor that uh, they had one guy. They had two vehicles, and one guy was working on one. One guy was working on the other. They were knocking them out in two hours each, Excellent. which I thought was amazing, really. But like I said, it's you know, like, like anything the first time, you just figure out where you want to do it. Then once you got a good game plan, um, there's a lot of different places you can put the sensors or inclinometers, but there's some places that are better than others. I mean, there's easier places to run cables. Um, there's easier places to access stuff. So once you figure out that on the first one, the second ones, third one, whatever, they're, they're fairly quick. So we tell people four to five hours for the first one, two to three so for the I second one. Two components here. One, it looks kind of like a uh, black box. Doesn't have much to do there. Is that the uh, junction box? This one actually is our display. Ah. It's got the cardboard over it, but oh, okay. um, this is an LCD display. Uh, it gives you graphical representation of the van or, or the truck. Shows you your front axle, your rear axle, and then your overall weight. And when you set it up and program it, you can put in you know, what you want your alarm values to be. So that's completely up to the user. This guy, is they call it an ECU electronic components unit or I call it a, a J box or junction box. So on a typical two axle system you have four inclinometers, one on each leaf or suspension component. So you got two in the back, two in the front. Those cables plug into a junction box and then you've got a cable that runs from the junction box up to the front that plugs into the, the display. So it's pretty simple. So your four Inclinometers into one junction box, one cable from the junction box up to the display, and then you've got a cable that runs from your display into your fuse box on your van. Um, nice thing now, nowadays, a lot of bodybuilders, upfitters, um, they're putting in a separate fuse panel for accessory items just like this, so you don't have to worry about messing up uh, the electronics of the truck. Okay. So it, it makes for a clean install. Well, speaking of electronics, new vehicles these days are chocked full of all kinds of electrical noise sending devices. How susceptible is this to noise? I mean, it's uh, it's been great. Your components are are you know well sealed, and there's really not a lot of electronics to it. Um, your inclinometers and your display are your main things, and um, so you the, haven't ever really had a problem with. We've not had an noise issue with no. Sort of we've got noise that kind of thing. Yeah. The nice thing is we've got over 20,000 systems installed worldwide. Ah. So we've had it on European vehicles, American vehicles, road trains in Australia. And it's, uh, you know, it's gone through some perfections or upgrades over the years. But, you know, what we've got is a, is a solid system, tried and true. Um, so it's, it's been great as far as no noise interference. And we're not, we're not interfering with other electronics. Other electronics aren't interfering with us.